friends. Let's paint a simple winter landscape that I think you'll really like. And I'm gonna see if I can do it without fast forwarding the video and get it in a short enough time that I'll be able to upload it. Um, I've had a little bit sketchy internet lately and then the upload speeds are really, really slow. Okay, so I better get started. Okay, let's see if I can do this. So this is a six by six inch canvas panel. Um, it's been gessoed. It's from Michaels, I believe. Um, many artists like to put more gesso on. Um, I'm gonna put so much paint on this and I don't think it needs it. Needs it. You'll, ha you'll figure out what you like. Here's the direction we're going in. This is a five by seven canvas uh, panel and I palette knife painted it. We'll see, um, it may be actually quicker to brush this. We'll see what we end up doing. And then the colors I put out are Thalo Blue Green Shade, Neutral Gray 5, Titanium White, and some, probably should wait till we get towards the end to put out some Hooker's Green because the really dark color here, there's some straight up Hooker's Green and then there's some Hooker's Green mixed with some of the blue to, and it almost looks just black um, when you get it next to the white. And then another tip here is, so I made a puddle of about, oh, one part phthalo blue and about five or six parts neutral gray. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. I just thought you might like to know. And it was, it was quite a big puddle. And then I scooped a little out and put about half white and half of the puddle color. We'll call it the puddle color. <laughs> it's kind of a blue gray, blue green gray. And then I put another blob out here so maybe about one fourth or one fifth of the puddle color to about five parts white. Um, but it helps you if you already have some of that stepped out while you're painting. And then I marked my canvas off in thirds, which is always a good place to, so we'll put the tree on this third and then the horizon lines on that third. And I'm just gonna use, oh, I've got brushes. I don't know what kind of brushes I wanna use. So I've got a big angle brush. I've got a smaller filbert, maybe a half inch or a three quarter inch flat and some smaller brushes. And I also have my palette knife here because that could, that could actually be fun to make the tree with. All right, let's get started. Let's see if I can do this without rushing. So we want to keep the background pretty light but it's also dark right along the horizon line. So maybe we'll start with a little medium. And of course you can use any colors you want. And I just got too much water in my paint there. I meant to wet my brush just a little bit and I wasn't paying attention. So I'll grab some thicker paint. And I'll just start here. I was just talking to favorite daughter today. Um, I've been thinking about doing a Facebook Live. But I suppose I suppose I could do it like this because um, I don't know how to show myself and show what I'm painting just yet. I don't. I've got a camera. I think it would video. I'm not even sure. I just use it for photographing my art. I really need to check all that out. And I'll probably stop talking as I think. I'm gonna flip this around. So I remember. Oh, that's kind of pretty, isn't it? I actually may stop the video to dry this, but hopefully I won't. Um, if you've been watching my videos, I jump ahead or I time lapse them fast forward them so that we can get them uploaded. Um, I suppose I could call my internet service provider to see if they can even offer me faster uploads. Downloads and streaming is amazing. Um, but uploading videos is really slow. A lot of times it doesn't even want to upload. That might be pretty good. 
right there. Of course, I always want to play a little bit. This might look really good brush. It might be neat to have the, the two different examples. Okay, I am going to stop the video so that I can uh, dry it with a hair dryer. You guys don't need to listen to that. And then I'll be right back where I left off. I don't know if you can see this, but this is surface dry with a hair dryer, so I can touch it now and it doesn't come off on my fingers. Um, it dries a little darker. And even though I know that, I sometimes forget that. And I'm gonna put just a little sweep of color. You do not have to do this, but I tend to like my corners darker to keep. So if you have the light somewhere on your third and inside the painting, it keeps you, the viewer inside the painting. Um, but this is a pretty simple uh, landscape, so it's really not, you don't have to worry about it too much. Plus, I'm kind of liking the little dry brushes of clouds. And then, oh, another tip before I forget it. So the last thing you want to paint is white so that our snowflakes and splatters show up. Uh, the white side of the tree shows up. And then I ended up putting some white on the ground in that one. Um, if you get some white in there, don't worry about it. It's not like it's wrong. Just helps you maybe control the values a little bit better. So I was just washing off my brush a little bit there and then let's paint. So this is primarily white. Oh, here, if I flip it upside down like this one, it's really light. So I think we'll paint maybe even a little bit of white and a little bit of our lightest color. Actually, I don't want to flip it upside down. I want to do it this way. And if you go up above the line like I did there, don't worry about it. It's just like little hills in the distance or something. <laughs> It'll just make it look more realistic. Oh, and I hope my, I can see my table wiggling. Hopefully the video isn't wiggling too much. Okay, now I want to flip it. And I might actually hold it too. Um, just because it's easier for me to get the edges off camera when I before I dried it, I just I just tapped a little color on the edge. Oh, hopefully I'm not off camera too. <laughs> You can frame these when they're done. Um, they're never quite square. So take it with you to the store if you can. I mean, I know as I'm filming this, uh, the pandemic's going on and it's getting to be really scary all around the world again, because it's fall, fall where I live. So in the Northern Hemisphere, I guess I should say it's getting, countries are locking down and stuff. Anyway, take it to the store with you. So make sure the frame's forgiving enough for it to fit in the frame. Okay, I think we're going to call that good enough, and I'm going to dry it. So I think I'm a dry hair, uh, drying it with a hair dryer, sort of saving what I've done. Sort of like saving on your computer. Okay, I'll be back in a sec, guys. So while I was drawing this, I noticed that this time around, I'm a little grayer, I think. You have, we'll have to see how this looks when I look at the video. This one's a little bluer. It's not like you can get it wrong, but maybe if you wanna use a little less gray in your mix, um, totally up to you. And I also think I'm gonna try palette knifing this um, because I don't think there's a lot of palette knife artists doing videos like these and I'm gonna here I think I'll just turn it around Oop, I thought maybe that would be darker but I think no 
that is the same color. So let's mix a little. Of course, it can take longer to palette knife because you, you, I, you, I personally, when I do it, I mix more colors or more shades, maybe is a better way to put that. Um, whereas a brush, you can kind of blend. You can blend right on the the canvas, but what's nice is the little skips that you get. And I think they'll end up making it a little bit look a little bit more like snow. So I'm gonna put some darker skips there. And I'm tempted to dry that before I start doing the background. Yeah, maybe we'll we'll risk it. So I'm just wiping my knife off on a paper towel, dip it in the water. I have two jars of water here. Um, one's like sort of dirtier water and one's cleaner, clean water. So I just dip into the one first, if that makes sense, to keep my other jar clean. Let's see here, I have a feeling that's gonna be, let's do this. So I'm just hinting at trees. And if I go a little lower, it's okay. Or what you could do, because it's really the same colors, not worry about going down quite so far. And then what I'm thinking is I'm gonna kinda go in a, a C shape. I think I want the highest trees there. And then we'll go a little lower here. And if you get too much, just scrape it. And that's pretty much the color of my background, isn't it? I'm just going to wipe off my knife. Let's grab some of my lighter color. Now you could dry it if you wanted right here or not. That'd be up to you. See, so you can mix a little bit. I'm also wanting to turn this. I suppose I can. I don't know if that drives you guys crazy. So I can pull up. And then we're going to have a tree here. So we don't have to worry too much. So I grab just a little bit of dark. And I'm mixing right with my palette knife on the canvas. So you can. When I said it's easy, it's, I just think it's easier with a brush to mix on the canvas. I'm not sure exactly where my tree is going to go. like leave a little dark line like I did there that would give you a, an interesting horizon am I off camera and there's nobody here to tell me <laughs> done this one also as a watercolor. I don't think I've uploaded it to my website yet. Um, if I haven't and that interests you, let me know in the comments. I know I have it as a watercolor class, a version of this. Because it's a good, it's good practice with values and not a lot, not worrying about a lot of colors. And 
Alrighty, how's this looking? It actually looks pretty good. Now we could come back in. Actually, I'm gonna dry it and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is looking a little darker than I want. Um, so I'm picking up some lighter color and I'm gonna see, maybe let's put some marks in. I kind of want it a little lighter at the top and have a little bit darker. I may not have mixed this light enough, which happens. You don't know till you try. Oops, nothing's coming off. Maybe I'll do that right now and actually make this a light. I'll make an even lighter puddle. I'll grab all of that. Yeah, I think my steps aren't, aren't big enough. Of course, any the layers just help you. Anyway, so now that this is kind of dry, I can, um, when I scrub, scrub or just kind of rub the palette knife, it picks up little high spots. Here, let's see if I can show you. Now there it kind of did. So it's not much paint on it. Just put a little bit on the bottom. Let's try over here. Yeah, isn't that kind of neat? That's a decent example. And don't worry if it doesn't do it for you or, because already, as you can see, my painting is turning out different than this one. They just do. You're hand painting them and it's gonna have your signature on it. Just like your handwriting looks like yours, your paintings will look like yours. They're supposed to. I think I just mommed you guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Of course, I've got my trees gonna be here somewhere. And nothing's coming off as I try to do that. Oh, a little bit was coming off. I don't know what's, what that was. Okay, and then I think I want a little darker here. Or is it already looking darker? Kind of is already looking darker. What does this color do? Sort of hinting at clouds. I'm also trying to, uh, since we have a brush background, make it look a little more unified. This does. So I'm thinking these areas are already dark enough. So I'm just kind of adding, I don't know, just a little more depth to the trees by adding some value, different values. And we may not need it too much. So sometimes what happens to me is I get really uh, into the background and I really should get that big tree on there, the big tree on there and see what else needs to be added before I do all that. I don't know if you guys saw my lemon palette knife painting. It was three lemons. Um, I sold it. 
So thank you to the person who bought it. I really appreciate that. Um, but I thought the background was actually pretty good to start with. But I didn't like it, and then I lightened it, and I'm like, oh, no, no, I need to darken it. Or, you know, I just kept going back and forth. I can't totally remember the the order now, but it's kind of funny. It's like, oh, wait till you get get more detail on there. So I'm fighting with my uh, video arm here, trying to get this. And that's still not quite what I want. But yeah, I think I should probably dry this pretty quick. And then we'll put the tree on and see what we think of everything else. As I keep playing. <laughs> okay, guys, hang on. All right, a couple of things I'm not liking is my cloud. Um, when it dried, got dark. I don't want it white. Okay, see so me mixing that, so I'm mixing yet another puddle. So that could be frustrating, but the upside is just remind yourself that, um, in my opinion, that acrylics really look great with layers. If you don't like your painting, like I'm not real crazy about this just yet, but I love this one. It just may need more layers and more stuff going on. Maybe not so much more stuff going on, but more layers. I actually kind of like that one better anyway. And I also kind of will be pointing down at our tree. So that will be good. I think I might just put some on there and then just kind of scrub. All right, hopefully that will dry about like that because I like that. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Okay. And then the other thing I was kind of not quite liking, if I'm worried that, that might be too dark. I'm going to mix a little bit in between color here. Let's get just some hints of here. Let's turn this around. So these trees are a little bit closer because they're darker and they're also lower. So they're darker. So I've kind of got a dark over here. Oops. I think I grabbed a really dark color there. That's well, that's lighter than I want. <laughs> I suppose it's good for you guys to see how I handle, you know, I want it darker, not dark enough, I want it lighter. And don't worry, you're not going to necessarily know, and sometimes I think I know. And then as a painting gets close to done, I'm like, oh, I need to change that, and I need to change that. And you can. Quite frankly, you could paint probably forever on a painting. So then that begs the question, how do you know when one is done? Um, with practice, you'll get to know what you like and what's done for you. I know that's not a very fun answer for people. They want something a little bit more concrete. When you're happy with it. Okay, I'm liking that we're getting a little bit more depth. Um, I think definitely dry it and definitely get that big tree on because I haven't been listening to myself yet about doing that. Alrighty, so I'm going to mist my paints just a teeny bit with a little bit of water. And then move it to the side because I'm going to... Oh, sorry guys, I just banged the arm. I'm going to mark... 
So this isn't square, so I just set the T-square up um, just so it kind of sits against the side here because it'll be close enough. And normally I don't use a pencil, but it's what I have handy and it's skinnier than um, the chalk pastels I have or my charcoal pencil. And then I'm just gonna indicate about where the center of that tree is going. And it may, the tree may move a little left on us, but that is totally okay. And so my paint, while it's surface dry, isn't completely dry. My T-square here wants to stick to it. And I'm not gonna go very far up. We just kind of need a, a little guide. I'm laughing because I'm fighting with all the stuff I have sitting here. Okay. Um, I may use a brush just to get some color on there. And to keep, I don't know how long this is taking. I'm already getting worried about that. And I think we'll just take, oh gosh. Can't decide between the medium and the dark. Maybe we'll take the medium color and kind of figure out Let's see, I want the tree to come up higher. So that's kind of nice. If you're brushing, just kind of let it wiggle. Let's see, now I can't see it, so I'm going to grab a little dark. Kind of like that. Of course, this tree's quite fat, which I like. I might bring it over to the left here a little bit. You can't get this wrong. You can have a skinny tree, you can have a fat tree. Okay. The other thing I think I wanna do is kinda guess where the shadow's gonna go. dark enough. Sorry, my, my voice is kind of squeaky today. I don't know if that's dark enough. We'll pick up a little bit of that paint. That's still wet. We can add some shadow in later too. You don't have to do it first. That's a little darker. I really haven't, I keep scribbling where I'm really not changing that, so let's just leave it. Let's see where our tree ends up. I'm washing out my brush. Um, you can leave them sit in the water, but then a lot of times they, the wood in there splits. And they're just not as comfortable to grab if the wood splits. Alrighty. Um, I think we're going to start with dark. So I should have mixed off camera to speed things up. That might be too much blue. So it's Thalo Blue Green Shade and Hooker's Green. May need more blue, which surprises me. Oh, that's getting pretty dark. So artists will mix on a gray palette because that's actually better because the white is a really strong contrast. Um, if you mix on a, a gray, you can actually see your um, shades better. But these styrofoam plates are cheap and I can stick them in a gallon baggie, mist them with a little bit of water, put another plate on top before I put it in a gallon baggie and uh, it'll last for a couple weeks. Actually, I think that's a pretty good color. I don't know if you can see that. All right, so I'm gonna grab a little, pretty much on my edge or the tip. I'm gonna turn it because I'm right-handed. So I'm using this hand to kind of anchor and this hand to kind of guide, help guide too. You, you may not like that, you'll figure out. You'll figure out what you like. 
Okay, and then we kind of want So I'm just picking up some on my on the tip of my knife. And this is where your tree can get whiter. Just totally fine. When I say it gets whiter, it's not a bad thing. Thicker. And I'm starting with a dark just so I can see where I'm going. Um, but there really isn't a right or wrong here. And I'm gonna put more shades on the top. Well, that one I end up doing. So trees are rarely symmetrical, and I just did that one symmetrical. Mm. This one's kind of droopy from the get-go. There's some branches coming towards us. Sometimes, and then I'll stick up a little. And I'm normally not a fast painter. And if you don't paint this as fast as I do, please don't worry about that. Go as slow and as easy as you like. This is like, this is supposed to be relaxing and fun. I'm feeling a little stressed because I wanna Get this done pretty quickly so I can get the whole thing uploaded with all my chit chat, <laughs> which you may not like. Let me know if you don't like all the chit chat. That can be super annoying. Of course, I suppose you can turn the volume down. I would never know. <laughs> okay. Well, I got a big blob on my knife there. Should have grabbed a, I'll remember next time if I'm gonna do this, I need a glass of water. I have handy. So one of the other tricks to this painting is drawing the steps. Especially with if you do the palette knife for this palette knife, uh, you can do all this with a brush. If you do it with a palette knife, it, the paint goes on thicker, and it can really help to uh, to dry it so you don't end up with mud. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of fill in the center a little bit there. All right, let's try this and add some different color and see how it goes. All right, so I've got a big blob. I don't know if you can see it. If I poke it, I don't think you can see it. Anyway, I've got a big raise of paint there. It's sort of surface dry, but if I push too hard, it's gonna squish out. Um, just to let you know, I guess. I don't know why I'm telling you that. Oh, and the other thing is, so I'm thinking that the light side of the tree is going to be on this side and then the dark side of the tree on this side. Um, we're going to put some white snow right in here. So I'm going to start with trying to decide. Do I want to start with this dark color? Let's start with this color. I don't know if it matters. And then I'm going to hopefully pull across the different colors too. Um, so you don't have literally, you know, a center line with white on this side and then darker on this side. Um, I have some medium tones and even some darker values that come over and then I have a few hints of whites. But in general, the lights on the left, I hope that made some sense. So I'm trying to decide what I want to do. I think I want to I think be more comfortable if I turn it. Yeah, that where it went kind of where I wasn't planning on, but that's all right. 
So now I got plenty over on that side. Oh, actually, I could put a little, put a little blob up there. And we may come back with greens if we cover them up too much. We'll come back with that dark color again. Or you can even come back like right now with a little bit of, yeah, sometimes, I don't know. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Mix it a little right on the canvas. So yeah, still got some dark on my knife there. That's a nice triangle shape. Whoops. It's looking better. And you're really starting to get some contrast and depth, which I hope you all are getting excited about. I am. Uh, that's what really makes it is the contrast. And the textures, this is pretty much a tree portrait. Um, Cause I was thinking that would be easier for you guys. And also quicker, it's a little six by six. Let's... Oh, that doesn't even show. I'm going to come back with some of my darker original puddle. So sometimes mixing, doing the white, no, not drawing every step. But I got a nice smear there that looks neat. Um, every time that happens and I'm doing a video, I think Bob Ross and Happy Accidents. Um, oh, I grabbed the wrong color. It's not really showing either. Oops. Kind of at least went going tree direction. Grab some of this dark. So my, my tree here is taller than I thought it was going to be and not as fat. I'm thinking I might make it a little fatter here. Is that looking pretty good? If you paint too much and cover up all the green, I think I already mentioned that, you can just put it right back in on top. That happens to me. So this is my even lighter puddle. That might be better if we dried it here.
Yeah, I think I'm gonna dry it. Alrighty, I surface dried it a little bit. And I'm starting to like it. And if you guys aren't sure what to do with it sometimes, or just put it down and come back to it tomorrow, or come back to it in an hour, go have a cup of coffee, something like that. That can really help. Because like when I dry it, I see things I want to do. Um, that I don't always see as I'm talking and painting. Well, I don't really recommend talking and painting. I mean, you can, but um, for me, it's harder on my brain. <laughs> I like, I usually am pretty quiet when I'm painting. You guys are probably way better multitaskers taskers than I am. So I'm not sure I like what I just did. Plus, I've got a couple strokes doing the same thing there. Trying to keep it, oh, that helped a little bit. Try and keep it random. Okay, I wasn't really planning on doing those darks and then I did. Okay, um, what do I wanna do here? Do I wanna lighten that up a little bit? And then darken that up a little bit. Oh, that's kind of nice. And I like, I definitely like, like how this is framing. Oh, there's something we, I wanted to do when I was drying. I forgot. Um, not sure what color it was. Let's take this one and see what it looks like. It's a little dark. So I was going to scrape in. Scrape in a little bit of medium color there. It's kind of um, a little bit like frosting a cake. If anybody cooks, bakes. I don't know if I did anything there. I might dry the same color. just have to stop playing and see what it does. Okay. All right, so now we're getting pretty close to done. I'm gonna put some highlights. Now let's go back to this lightest blue again. Bluish green, let's put a couple of them. Like there's snow. So I'm thinking, you know, try to be random. Try to go a little quicker. Oops, that's not doing anything there. It's kind of doing something funny. Let's get a little more paint and leave it. Oh, I picked up some of the color underneath because it's not very dry. Or else I picked it up. Here's my palette in the... I may have picked it up from right there. I'm going to grab just a smidge of white here. All right, we're doing this color, right? Trying to see if I want some dark color right in there. 
way. I don't think that worked. Probably should let it dry and then try again. Huh, that's kind of interesting, though. All right, let's leave that alone, let it dry. Talking to myself as much as you guys here. And then I'm bumping into my side table here. Um, what do we want to do? Okay, and then we'll pull a few around the corner. Pull it around the corner. How's that looking? Oh, that's looking pretty good when I look through the video. A lot of times um, I'm too on top of the details when I'm painting it, so it really does help to step back from it, uh, put it away for a day, that kind of thing I just mentioned earlier. All right, let's add some white so we can see where we're, where we're coming from, where we're going. Um, would there be some white maybe hanging Oh, I was shaky there, but that worked. I think snow paintings are really fun to paint. And I'm thinking you know, this pellet knife, well, it may take a little longer to video because I stop and dry it and all that stuff. Um, I think it's maybe a little less intimidating because all I am doing is putting blobs of paint on here. Trying to decide where. Oh, let's make another branch come in there. Okay, I don't want, as we get down, I want to go less to the right with the white. That makes sense. Kind of got a little messy, messy. Better. Should we skip? Let's do this one for sure. I got so much paint on there, it's making me nervous. Here, let's grab a little on the edge. I just made almost like made another branch there. I'm starting to sing, don't you think, guys? Let's see, do we want more white there? Maybe just uh of course my knife is dirty. Let's grab a little bit on the tip. Maybe just pull that out like that. Gosh, that's looking pretty darn good. I think we should leave that alone. I'm going to dry it so I don't mess it up, and I'll be back. I want to give you a, a look here. The contrast is totally what makes this painting and the texture. But now we're really starting to cook with gas, and I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but... Uh, if you've watched my chalk videos, you can tell I'm getting happy, <laughs> like I'm liking it. And then I was thinking, it's a little off to the right. So I was thinking about adding a little tree. Grab a little bit of this color, maybe. So this one won't have won't have um, the contrast like this one does because it's off in the distance, and I'm kind of getting scrapey, scrapey because I'm afraid scrapey look because I'm afraid to put too much paint down. 
Oh, it needs to be a little darker though. I think that's a little darker. Should dry darker. All right, I'm gonna put a little little dot. It's not coming off my palette, and I think I'm being too scared. All right, let's add that can be light enough. Of course, this just made by me adding this tree made this video longer. And you don't have to add the tree. And really, you should do things in threes. Um, kind of like flower arranging, you know? Odd numbers. Oh, you know what I want to do? So I've got a flat base there. I want to kind of... Make it not quite so flat. All right, let's let that dry and then we'll add a little light on it. Okay, I think it's time where we add, we're pretty close to done. I'm gonna add a little bit of white clouds maybe. You could use mixing white, which would be more transparent. I'm pretty sure that my cloud right there. If you're worried, you could mix mix a little so it's not totally white. Mix just a little of your lightest light color, which is really hard to see if I got that any darker or any lighter. I think it is. So basically I'm thinking here that the tops of the clouds are usually lighter, a little darker underneath. Oops, I just stuck my hand on the tree. I'll add a little fingerprint texture. Of course, now I'm splitting hairs with values. I don't know that you guys need to do this. Now I'm just having fun playing. Okay, let's put, let's see if this is light enough. I'm gonna mix this with this, which will lighten it up just a smidgey, but just so it's not in my way. It's really the only reason. I hope that was on camera. I get to where I'm painting and I don't notice. Let's add a little, oh yeah, that's nice and light. Should have dried that with a hair dryer. Now that works. I'm gonna put a little blob up there. Grab a little darker color. I'm starting to wonder if this is a little too too light. 
Ah, that's pretty nice. We'll put a little, which I don't know if we need right there. I think it's time to dry it so I can fix that tree and then we're gonna put snow on and be done. Whoops, I forgot to turn the video on, but I didn't get very far. I'm just putting a little bit of white right there. Okay, now we don't wanna put white on this tree because it's way in the back. Let's try that color. I think we tried that again, but it was smearing in there. Maybe a little light. Helped a little it's darker than I wanted, but that helped. Oh, so I took some of this, my original color. Just kind of, I think we might call that good. I think, I think. Okay, so I have, you can splatter with toothbrushes. Um, you can splatter with, oh, I don't have a, I think that might work. Oh, I didn't have a brush ready for splattering. You can splatter with a brush. I would get a longer one, because it'll wiggle. And so you want to thin down your white paint, so it's about like milk. I'm gonna take some white paint um, and you do it with water. And then I am, um, since that makes, it could underbind the paint. Sorry guys, I just dropped my ring. Um, the water could, if you mix it with too much water, it could underbind the paint. Um, but I also put a gel gloss isolation layer, which is basically clear acrylic paint on top of all my paintings to help seal them up. Um, so I feel like the layers sort of bind together. If you've ever put two paintings face to face, um, they'll stick together after a little bit of time. And if you leave them way too long, you might not get them apart. So I'm adding water, whoops, and color. I don't want to do that. Did you just hear me draw my toothbrush? <laughs> okay, so. Add some water to this. Might be easier to add with a brush. And I think, so if you do a toothbrush, it's gonna splatter everywhere. So just be aware, either protect your area, uh, put on an apron, just be, be aware that it's gonna get on things. Okay, let's see how that looks. I'm going to grab my other toothbrush. I'm not sure which, I don't have it splattered so long. I'm not sure which one I'm going to like better. But I'm wondering if this one, because it's a little less dense. I'm going to get it wet, a little bit wet. Just dip, I just uh, dip the tip of it in the water. And this is definitely trial or error. So I'm going to move my original painting so I don't get it splattered. Grab a little bit more water. Okay, let's see if that'll work. Ah, it is. So that gives me nice, fine snow, which I like. Oops. 
Oops, I just hit my table. Okay, and it makes my thumb nice and white. I'm gonna stick that in my water. And I'm gonna wipe off my fingers here. And then another thing you can do, like I did on this one, is I you can take the end of a brush. Oh, here, I should show you how to splatter with this one first. Um, but you can also dip the end of the brush into the white paint and make dots that way. Here, I'll show you how to So the longer the brush, the easier this is. The longer the bristles are. You can find a watercolor brush that has nice long ones, but I don't want to use my watercolor brush. My only long one I have for acrylic paint. And then you can just, well, it's not doing it. Oh, there we go, got some. So I would hold it pretty close so it doesn't splatter on everything you own. I'm gonna try a little more water. There we go. I'm kind of liking it. Let's see if I can get some up here. It's pretty hard to control. I just got some on my glasses. <laughs> okay. I'll wash that off. And then if you want to have some strategic snow. Actually, I'm going to stick it in a thicker paint. So I have it on the end of my brush. Oh, that's too pointed of a brush. I gotta find a better one. It's, I mean, it'll work, but it's really rounded. Oh, this guy might work better. Give him a try. Oops. Ah. So we can have some really big snowflakes. I think this is just a peaceful, I think I, I did a whole collection, so I've painted something similar to this several times. I did a whole collection a while ago and sent it to my agent. I think I called it Peaceful Winter Wishes. It's just a peaceful, fun painting. And I thought it'd be a fun one to try. It's a good one to try for palette knife. And I think I better stop before I get too many of those on there. Okay guys, I'm gonna turn the camera around, say goodbye. I just checked um, all the video clips and it took me a little over an hour to video it. Um, I think it took about an hour and a half, hour 40 minutes for me to actually paint it. And I'm not telling you that if it takes you two hours, three hours, um, do not worry about it. I'm not telling you that because I'm trying to tell you you're slow or you should do it in a certain amount of time. Um, I'm just telling you because people usually ask me how long it takes. And I actually was trying to rush. So normally that probably would have taken me two hours to paint. Okay. Um, let me know what you think. Let me know if you want a traceable for this one. I don't know if I'll put one up because you can just draw a triangle and figure out your tree shape. Um, but I'm happy to do a traceable if you guys want one. Thank you, thank you for spending your time with me. Uh, I hope we can get this whole thing uploaded since it's a little bit over an hour. So I better stop chatting, better do art hugs, and I hope to chat with you guys soon. Bye.